Hi, this is Charlie Matotuyela with Blue Bear Flutes. Of course, our website is bluebearflutes.com. That's bluebearflutes.com. I've got so many people that ask me, do you sell this stuff that you make? I'm like, uh, that's what I do for a living. But anyway, um, I just wanted to share a really quick video with you on some techniques with uh, basically how to put wax on your flute. Now, there are people that sell products that uh, they may call wax or what have you. I try to list the ingredients on everything that we use. Um, the flute wax that we use is one that we make. It is mainly beeswax base and like a mineral oil um, mixed with it to soften it up a little bit. Um, but it's, uh, it's really good stuff for, for basically making sure that the pores of your flute don't allow moisture into them or to allow moisture out of them because um, erosion happens whenever there's you know something like this going on so anyway um, this flute here is one I've had for a while it's basically not been cared for a lot as I probably should it still plays pretty good I think sounds good um, what would really help this flute specifically would be if I put a little bit of oil inside of it. And you can use numerous types of oil, like mineral oil, uh, which is baby oil basically is a, is a mineral oil base. Uh, olive oil is good. Just anything that's not going to turn on you, like uh, some plant-based oils will eventually go bad. Now, in the past, I've made other videos that discussed types of oils you can use. And um, I also mentioned that we used uh, tea tree oil in a lot of the other oils that we used. The tea tree oil is kind of like an antimicrobial, so it, it helped to keep stuff from going bad, um, not letting the bacteria settle into the natural plant oil like sunflower oil, which we used to use a lot. It's really good stuff. But if you mix tea tree oil with it, it helps. Peppermint oil is also very good to mix with something. Um, both tea tree and peppermint oil will tend to dry things out. Um, peppermint oil, uh, another flute player from forever ago had turned me on to, keeps spiders and insects away from your flute, especially in the mouthpiece, which is like one of those things that people that are arachnophobic um, are always concerned with where spiders can live. Uh, so that's uh, one thing you might want to consider if you're going to put some oil inside of your flute. Like I said, straight up olive oil, good stuff. And I've had other videos on how to do that. You just basically drizzle it in there and turn it around in circles, and that way it'll coat the inside of it completely. Today's, though, video is basically waxing the flute. And as I mentioned, some people sell different types of wax products. You need to know what's in these things because I try not to use anything on my flutes that's not something I couldn't eat, you know, or isn't safe to be around your mouth. This kind of stuff's really important. This is a little two ounce container of our imitation bear fat. We call it imitation bear fat, not because we're blue bear flutes, but because forever and a day, historically, native people, especially Southeastern Indians, and on often occasion, mostly Cherokee people, used real bear fat for just about everything. Everything from oil on their face, in their hair, flutes, fishing poles. You know, I've put it actually on my, uh, uh, accelerated pedal on my car so you can use it for a lot of stuff we had a sliding glass door um, when my oldest boy who's now 24 was younger and uh, that sliding glass door wouldn't slide it would always get stuck but we used some uh, bare fat on it. it was really good and fixed all those problems so you can pop this out of the container if you want if you do you'll find that it'll start kind of greasing up your hands you can just use that straight up by itself like I say on on, on the flute uh, or you can actually wipe the, uh, the wax on the flute a little bit like this. Is actually, you can see how it kind of uh, comes on there pretty quickly. Uh, you can do that number. So by the time you've done that once, you've got quite a bit of it on your hands. And it really does a good job of protecting the flute. It penetrates the pores of the wood. And getting a little bit of heat there helps it to melt inside of it. And you can see the shine that is on this thing already from just those couple of times. Um, I'm gonna rub my finger around in it a little bit and put it on the edges of the track area here. Now, something you may wanna consider is if you've bought one of those fancy flutes with 
some of that uh, fancy clear lacquer on it, <laughs> you know, like the Indians used to use. Um, if you've got a flute with that, wiping the outside of it with wax is probably a bad idea. The um, lipids in the beeswax, any kind of natural oil, um, anything like that is actually going to cause most uh, finishes to lift up. The only time it's really good to use this on the outside of a flute is uh, number one, if you have a track area that's not lacquered or finished like that, or if number two, you have a natural flute like this one that's not um, been stained with, uh, or I should say tarnished because we actually use a natural stain on some of our flutes, but it hasn't been tarnished with its uh, um, shiny glossy lacquer that it's not going to be there all the time anyway because the more you put lacquer around your mouth it'll actually eventually dissolve it. You're digesting it for that matter uh, and some of that lacquer gets in your mouth. I'm only aware of one company that produces a lacquer that's safe for people to eat that we can use on a flute and I've used it in the past and it looked good but I'm just not into spraying lacquer on a flute. It's just wrong to me. Um, Putting a little bit of that wax inside of the track is not a bad idea, but you have to be very careful not to damage the edge of the sound hole here, and you want to make sure that there's none kind of hanging around in the cracks and crevices of that track, so I used the cloth here to remove any of that. Now this is not a quote-unquote lint-free cloth, but it's been used for so long that there's really no lint left on it, um, so it's okay for me to do this. I have actually uh, done repair jobs on flutes that people sent me and they ran a cleaning rod up inside of it with there again a non-lint free cloth and it was just a veritable hairball inside of there and it wouldn't play because of all the the uh, plant or the lint fibers are up inside of it uh, so anyway this technique doesn't just work on blue bear flutes i'm telling you but you need to know if your flute has a lacquer finish on it. If it does have a lacquer finish, this will likely remove it. One other great place to put some of this wax is underneath of the flute block, as anything you can do there to keep moisture from sticking uh, and collecting is a great idea. Plus, the slicker this is underneath of here, the uh, better your flute's gonna sound. So, almost finished here. Just wiping the last bit of it down with some I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this big time here. There we go. The flute block deserves just as much effort. <laughs> and if you don't know if your flute's lacquered or not, check the, uh, the flute maker. Ask them, look at their advertisements, and make sure you read about this kind of stuff before you buy. And uh, that'll tell you whether or not uh, it's safe to put wax on the outside of your flute. Now I mentioned even if you have a lacquered flute, most of the time the track area, the block, the bottom of it that is, are not going to have this lacquer on them. If you bought it from Blue Bear Flutes in the last 10 years, it didn't have any lacquer on it. If you bought it before 10 years ago, there's a really good chance it didn't have any lacquer on it either. Even the flutes that we sell that are quite shiny are usually shiny on their own accord. Now. I've shown videos on how to tie this back on before, but you basically keep the, the uh, leather flat and you start at one place and then you start wrapping and keeping it flat as you go around the flute. It's being unruly here. Um, as you go around the flute, keep it flat and then as you come back, flat and then back flat. The reason you do that, not only for, for the look, is if you put a twist in there, the leather has more of a chance of breaking than it would if, if it were on there flat. If you'll notice too, this piece here is where part of the strap has come down. And on the other side over here, I've got one coming down. What I'm gonna do is put my thumb on top of that. I'm gonna use a thumb over here and a finger over there. And I'm actually pulling down. This is something to see. If you haven't seen an in-depth video about this yet, I do have a video on tying your flute block back on, but it's also in one of our flute class videos, our 12-week course. You can hold that down, and then that'll give you the opportunity to take one piece, rabbit goes through the hole. <laughs> I'm not telling you to stick that leather in your mouth. It's just what I do. Anyway, and there's your little knot on the back. It takes a little practice, but you can get the hang of tying a knot pretty quickly like that. Um, and then 
The other thing we like to do is tie something on the back of it. My dad used to call a half hitch. This way, if you want to untie it, you can do that. But also, I find oftentimes that this is strong enough to hold most flutes up. Don't rely on it if you're trying to protect a two or three hundred dollar flute or something that you're really concerned with. But like I said, this flute here costs 150 bucks, I think, or so on our website. I don't even remember, but um, it's definitely sturdy enough to hold that one up. Uh, let's see if it made the change in the sound here. If you haven't seen a six hole flute that played like that where you don't have to keep your finger covering this hole for whatever crazy reason, check out our other videos. We have videos on our six hole flutes and we also have these for sale on our website most of the time. So anyway, I hope this video has helped you out. A lot of people ask how it is that you can apply wax onto a flute and uh, you know, most important thing, like I say, make sure it doesn't have any lacquer on the outside of the flute. If you've bought it from a vendor that says it has an oil finish on it, usually putting wax on the outside of it is usually okay. Uh, if you bought it from Blue Bear Flutes, it's okay. Uh, if you do put wax on a lacquered finished flute, if it's an oil-based lacquer, after a long time it'll eventually cause the, the lacquer to come off very subtly. If it's a water-based lacquer, which is most of them, it's going to uh, cause it to come off pretty quickly. You may not notice it coming off, but it will, will remove and eventually all be gone. But uh, like I said, wax in the flute, a lot of reasons you want to do that is to help protect the flute from the environment, moisture, temperature, uh, lack of moisture, you know, like I said, anything you can do to keep it supple. We find that a lot of the historic flutes that have been discovered, uh, the reason they lasted so long is they were protected either by dog oil, bear oil, fish oil. Uh, I imagine somewhere up the stream somebody made some with people oil, but <laughs> a little joke there. Anyway, uh, great grandma was a headhunter. But uh, anyway, I hope this has helped you out. And uh, certainly, by all means, you guys uh, check out some of our other videos we have. We have lots of videos on making and playing Native American flute and more to come very soon. Once again, this is Charlie Montatuyela signing out for Blue Bear Flutes and BlueBearFlutes.com. Thanks very much again for tuning in. Bye for now.